1-800-342-AIDS. That the virus causes any disease whatsoever. But what about the individuals who have perpetrated this lie? They are all multi-millionaires. My name is uh, Dr. Tony Fauci. I'm the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at NIH. What do we have to say about the National Institutes of Health when a private laboratory, independent laboratory, found AZT to be 1,000 times more toxic than the laboratory of the NIH. That NIH. As the world grapples with the coronavirus, the immunologist Dr. Anthony Fauci has once again become a public force. We can understand a 5% error in a laboratory, even a 10% error. But a 10,000% error or a 100,000% error? That's fraud. And as I understand it, the word has gone out, and there's even documents and letters to prove it, that the CDC, the same organization that let blacks go untreated with syphilis, well documented, just to see what would happen with the disease. This same organization who had to admit that they can't give, on an, give in on the AIDS thing now because nobody would ever be able to trust the government. But science is acting no differently than politicians do. And now we have disease by politics. They're taking a test that is not only invalid, it's totally misleading. In fact, when you get results like that, then I would say you're going to be more correct. If you're positive, consider yourself negative. He was appointed director of National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases in 1984. I believe now that we have the agent in hand, that the amount of effort and energy that's being put into it by biomedical sciences that within a reasonable period of time we'll have a lot of these answers. Fauci is no stranger to leading the federal response to public health crisis. In the 1980s, his career heavily focused on the HIV AIDS crisis. I'm working directly on, on AIDS, both clinically and... By the way, at the request of many individuals, I did go for a test a couple of weeks ago in New York City at the biggest clinic there that does more testing than anybody else. And the doctor who ran it was bragging about the fact that he did more. When I told him about the book I wrote, he said, shh, don't say anything. My patients might hear. Okay. I tested negative. And of course, Fauci said, from a basic science standpoint, he cared for dying patients. And of course, Fauci said that you need, or when he was answering what I did in uh, Cleveland a week ago, he said, well, he's going to have to stick himself 300 times to transmit the virus. Where are you people in the press? 300 times to transmit a virus? You cannot have an epidemic under those circumstances. If you can't transmit it by blood, you certainly can't transmit it sexually. HIV is spread by sharing needles and through sex with an infected person. <laughs> he gives you the answer to the test in 15 minutes. So it's quite a racket. And by the way, it's very interesting because that you asked the question. Because you see, I was in a quandary as to what possible purpose could this serve? If you have a test that's 99.997% inaccurate, what are you proving? You would treat somebody with a deadly drug on the basis of a test that totally worthless. But if you look at the history of bioterrorism and other types of attacks uh, against the United States and other nations, it dates back to a variety of things such as in the early 80s. That you don't want to impress people and razzle dazzle them with your knowledge. You just want them to understand what you're talking about. And by the way, let me point out, that a research group in Australia in the past year have stated that not only is the test completely inaccurate, it's totally nonspecific. That you could be positive if you had the measles, if you had the flu, if you had a flu shot from your doctor, or if you had any one of a hundred diseases, let's look at the scenario. This is serious business. Yeah. Uh, Fauci has been one of the key advisors to the White House and Department of Health and Human Services on the virus, 
and how to combat it. If we do not successfully do what I just said, if we do the kinds of things that we are publicly saying we need to do, life is not going to be the way it used to be in the United States. We have to just accept that. But so what you're finally suggesting is that the man that you, this prominent physician uh, in Greenwich Village, uh, he in fact said, don't tell anybody about this because I'm making money off of these tests. Are you, are you finally saying to people don't get tested? I am saying absolutely do not get tested. Would you advise anybody to take a test that's 99.997% wrong? And you're saying that that's insanity. An increase in testing and developing treatments and vaccines, something he's learned from his decades-long career. And by the way, when I said to this physician, when he asked me why I was there and I told him I was a doctor, I said, because I'm in a heavy risk group. He said, aren't we all? And laughed about it. Because everybody knows that the medical profession sticks itself all the times and the only individuals who are going to die of AIDS who are part of the medical profession in any way, sh shape or form are those who are taking AZT or other drugs. And joined the National Institutes of Health in 1968 to fulfill his military service during the Vietnam War. He A drug that was discovered in the 60s as a chemotherapeutic drug for cancer and was shelved because it was too toxic to treat cancer. A drug worse than cancer is being to used to treat people who are immunosuppressed. But did anybody here bother to look at the insert, the paper that comes with the drug? It's a DNA terminator. It means it is a terminator, just like the movie. It terminates life. You terminate DNA, you terminate life. And they talk about side effects in the insert. When are you going to learn there is no such thing as a side effect in medicine? It's an unwanted direct effect. And you know what one of the unwanted direct effects of AZT is? Lymphoma, cancer, one of the diseases of AIDS, as they call it. Oh, another so-called side effect, which is really an unwanted direct effect? Pancytopenia. You need a definition? Pancytopenia. Pan. All. Cyto. Cells. Penia. Loss of. Loss of all your cells. That's AIDS. That is the definition of AIDS. So AZT, by definition, by their own drug insert, causes AIDS. And nobody survives AZT. That will eventually lead to your death. And they've cut the dosage way down because it was killing them too fast. It's like giving somebody a large dose of strychnine and they die within five minutes. And so the next person, you give them a, a, a few drops of it and they last four or five days and you say, strychnine's a wonderful drug. This person lasts five times longer. This is the kind of thing that they present to the world. How then can you explain the years of potential life loss in the 250,000 plus people who have died of AIDS according to CDC definition where drug use has been going on for centuries and suddenly we're losing people in their 20s and 30s because I'm not sure what you're... Okay, that's an excellent question, really. And you're using your head. That's the kind of question you should have been asked at the very beginning. And by the way, you said 20s and 30s are healthiest people. Isn't it strange? You got a disease, the first disease in the history of mankind that affects our healthiest? Now, I'll ask you, in a sense of redundant question, but yeah, I think it'll get the point across. I'm going to name five of 30 diseases. Tuberculosis, a new disease. Lymphoma, oh, that's a new disease too. Leukemia, oh yes, that's a very new disease too. Pneumocystis pneumonia, another new disease, but lesser known. And Kaposi sarcoma, another new disease. No, these diseases and the other 25 have always been around. It's real easy, it's real simple to create an epidemic. You simply take a bunch of diseases and put them under one heading and then claim that one virus is responsible for it. Well, that's nonsense. And now they're caught up in a maelstrom. 
Now if the truth gets out, yes, it will deal a blow to the credibility of the NIH and the CDC yeah. and the FDA and the AMA, and my God, it is sorely needed. Yeah. That blow is necessary to clean up the act. He's the Tylenol episode. The sound In 2001, he helped the public understand the health dangers of anthrax and bioterrorism. Today, there's a good chance you know someone with HIV. Than they are right now. The SARS situation uh, is a little bit more serious than run of the mill, in fact, substantially more serious than run of the mill influenza. In 2003, it was the SARS outbreak. Our patient, Nina Pham, is free of Ebola virus. And in 2014, Ebola. People with HIV can look just as healthy as anyone else. You can't tell if someone is infected with the virus just by looking at them. In fact, the person you're with right now might have HIV. In congressional hearings, things will get worse. Spirit and mind are wonderful things. What you're saying is true. It's a sentence of death for most people. And immediately, their body metabolism goes into negative phases. Everything becomes destructive. This is modern medical voodoo the statistics you will die because you've been told so this is american voodoo you know that you can change the t-cell count if you worry somebody completely established i worry about these individuals who go in and get these t-cell counts one after another because their whole life is focused on these t-cell counts and when it goes down a little bit instead of being reassured which is the way i would interpret it they get panicky now they're really doing damage. And at some point, if they're on drugs, and sometimes even if they're not on anything, but because they've been told they're going to die, like the witch doctors of Africa and elsewhere, these individuals will die because they literally worry themselves to death. It's a crime beyond belief. They're the rare ones, I admit. But the fact is, T-cell counts absolutely have no correlation with severity of disease. They can be low because you have wiped out your immune system, and they can be low because you don't need them. That's the important thing to understand. It is not a barometer for anything. And they lie, they lie, they lie, and then they lie some more. This gets on shows like this. You have a normal clearance. I was cleared here, and here I am talking to you, and I'll give you the whole truth the way I always have. President George W. Bush awarded Fauci the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2008. Fauci is the second National Institutes of Health Institute director to receive the highest civilian award in the United States. Normal means acting like there never was a coronavirus problem. I, I don't think that's going to happen until we do have a situation where you can completely protect the population. Best case scenario, a vaccine can be ready in 12 to 18 months, though some experts say that prediction is ambitious. But this is going to be the answer to our problems. Yeah, it's the way to solve their problems, which are you and me and about seven billion some odd other people. This is just inconvenient for the entire world collapsing around us, destroying the lives of countless millions of people, literally destroying their lives. It's inconvenient. Wrecking economies, causing people to live in fear, trapped in their houses over a seasonal flu. It's inconvenient. You cannot believe anything these people say. Pretty high stress job. I spend about uh, 15 hours a day in my office at the NIH, maybe more so. Getting outside in the day and hearing the birds and smelling the grass is kind of a very uh, pleasing thing for me.